scheduled Midland Public School Board of Education meeting. This time, if everyone would please turn off their cell phones, I would appreciate it, and then stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pam, if you could do roll call, please. Absolutely. President Branstad? Here. Vice President Singer? Here. Secretary McFarland? Absent. Treasurer Wasserman? Here. Member Baker? Here. Member Fazee? Here. Member Gorton? Here. Right. Thank you. Six out of seven. Moving into item 2.0, which is the consent agenda. We have 2.1, approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting on June 27th. 2.2, which is announcing um, resignations. 2.3 is bids um, for the purchase of two new wheelchair lift buses. 2.4 are several new people recommended for employment for the 2016-2017 school year. 2.5, adoption of the Midland School Code Articles 105 and 105C, which is for schools of choice. 2.6 is the adoption of books that were presented for a 28-day period of examination on June 13th. 2.7 is acceptance of the district building school improvement plans. 2.8 is acceptance of bids for relocation of the Parkdale playground equipment. And 2.9 is legal invoices for payment. Do I have a motion? I'm, I move to approve 2.1 <coughs> through 2.9, was it? 2.9. Yes, nine. correct. I'll support that. All right, moved by Jerry, supported by Yvonne. Is there any discussion? Angela, I will add that those oh. buses were bond purchases. So okay, thank you. That that was going to be a purchase of a bond. Yep. And then I, I just have one question on that. Um, the uh, school of choice, when would parents have to know for the new school, for Central Park School? We'll follow the same format that we've had, and, and those kind of go out in February and March at, uh, timeline. So, and actually, right before the meeting, Jerry and I were talking about some ways to maybe get that notice out to people early because we figure there's so many students that know that new school. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, there it is. <coughs> all right. This time, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Consent agenda passes. Moving into item three, which is presentations to the board for information. Turn over to you, Mike. Sure. I'm um, going to turn it over to Sharon Mortensen, who is president and CEO of the Midland Community Foundation. Most of you probably know Sharon. Um, and Sharon has been working with us on our outdoor STEM learning spaces. I'll let you take it from there, Sharon. Great, good. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to address you tonight and to introduce um, what we're going to be doing working in con conjunction with Midland Public Schools. And we very much appreciate the opportunity to partner with you and we're so glad that, that Mike approached us and we had the conversation about this um, STEM really outdoor learning environment at, at the new Central Park Elementary School. So I thought it would be helpful as we start just to, for those of you that might not be as aware, just to say what the Midland Area Community Foundation is and why we're getting involved in helping to fundraise for this particular outdoor learning environment. Um, as a community foundation, we're a little different um, than corporate or family foundations. Community foundations were started about 100 years ago, and the idea was that everyday people like you and I could put our money together, invest it, and then engage in philanthropy where we live. So it allowed a way for people to help to transform communities that they love and that they live in um, on a, in a very unique way. So we were started over 40 years ago by individuals in this community that saw the need for a community foundation to be a part of that. And we've been involved in a number of projects over the years. And one of the beautiful things about a community foundation is we can take individual contributions, contributions from business, contributions from foundations, put them together and do projects. Often we're not the largest funder. Uh, in fact, we, we rarely are um, with, a, with the resources we have available, but we can be a great catalyst to help projects go in our community. And some of the um, projects you're probably very aware of that are pretty iconic to Midland, the Tridge was a community foundation project. Again, we were not the largest funder at all. In fact,
fact, we're very thankful to our family foundations for their support of that. But we were able to bring together all of these various funders, including school children, that contributed to that when it was originally constructed. The rail trail is another example, and probably more recently, the fun zone renovation. I know some of you might have been involved with the original, and then 20 years after that, we did the renovation. So um, that really is a role that we're uniquely situated to play, and that is to enable people to donate to projects and others um, in our community to donate as well and to help do that. So, so that's the, the role that we'll be playing in this. And the motto of Community Foundations is for good forever because people's gifts that they've given um, in, in many <coughs> cases many years ago that have grown and been invested continue to reinvest in the community year after year. And I know certainly Midland Public Schools as well as our other schools throughout the county have been recipients of many of those funds for various projects that have been underway. So tonight we're here to talk about a campaign for the STEM outdoor learning environment. And this is um, a <coughs> drawing you're all very, very familiar with here on the board and one that you've looked at. And you will note, and I'll show you in the next drawing as well, that there are three outdoor learning spaces. And you'll see where that fits in with the plans that we have for this. And so here's the drawing, and again, I think you can see real clearly the three different areas, um, two at the top there and one at the bottom. And when we start to talk about recognition, we'll have recognition in each of those areas for those that donate as part of this. And we've all seen some renderings of the various components that will be a part of it. Now, I know this is still a work in progress, so some of these may shift slightly from what you see here, but we know that we'll have um, cisterns that collect water, a concrete river that are part of this. We'll have constellations, the solar system. We'll have levers and pulleys. We'll have magnetic boards that students can use and a variety of other things to help enhance the learning that, they'll, that will be taking place at that elementary school. So these are just a few little teaser pictures, um, understanding, of course, that these are just um, ideas of some of the components that will be a part of it. So a little background on the project. And again, this background for you is, is um, something you're very familiar with, but certainly employers, educators, government leaders have made renewed commitments to really beefing up our STEM education in this area. And with the public schools, with the work that you have done, you're creating a dedicated STEM-based elementary school, which is very exciting, very exciting for our community. Really, this could be a model for the state and the nation. So very exciting, and it's been great to follow the progress that you all have made as part of this. And so our role in this You've got so many people that have invested in what you're doing as part of that and certainly the bond funds that are going into the building itself. But we're going to solicit funds to help put together the STEM outdoor learning environment um, at that school. And this is beyond, through the bond money, the traditional playground is al already covered. So this is beyond that. This is an opportunity to really enhance their education in a fun way when they're outdoors um, during their school day. And certainly those components that can be outside all the time will be available to anyone in the community to enjoy and after hours um, as you know, the school grounds are available for individuals in our community. So our goal is to raise $50,000 from the public to be matched by $100,000 from Midland Area Community Foundation. So we're doing a two to one match. So for every dollar that someone donates um, up to $50,000, we will match it with $100,000. That's in addition, we've also given a grant, or are in the process of giving a grant to Midland Public Schools for an additional $50,000. So our total commitment is 150, but 100 of that to really help leverage public support for the project. And we want to provide recognition as part of this for donors that's integrated into this space. And I know there are many ways that we work to recognize donors, um, and we've seen it in so many projects around our community. But we wanted something, and I know we've met with Mike and his team on several occasions to talk about how could we have this really fit in the environment that's there? And what could we do that would really enhance the learning that will take place while still recognizing donors? Because just a plaque with donor names wouldn't have the same impact. So um, in just a second, you'll see our idea. Um, and we're very excited too, I know um, Bridget and Shannon are here tonight, and they were part of some of the ideas that are generated as we talk about the individuals that we'll highlight. So, um, and the other thing I should mention is people might say, well, where is this $100,000 coming from? Well, when I talked about the whole concept of community foundations, these are dollars that people have donated over the years that have grown, that we continue to give back on, on a yearly basis, um, and actually on a quarterly basis, we give grants out in our community. So these are dollars that our neighbors and our friends and our colleagues have 
donated to um, better our community. And so this is one of the ways that we're going to be using those dollars. So um, the theme for this is scientists, physicians, engineers, mathematicians, other folks that have helped us to <coughs> really shape the world as we know it through various STEM disciplines. And we're going to highlight some of those. So they're offering us the framework for recognition. And the donor recognition will be um, really tie in with the bi biographies of these folks and what they've done as a part of that. So our theme is join famous names in STEM. So join with others that have contributed in STEM and help to contribute to this wonderful environment for our children in this community. And so the folks we're going to highlight, and again, this was done, we met with Mike and his team, and I, I don't know if it was Bridget or Shannon or them kind of brainstorming together, um, came up with these names that highlighted people in different areas that would also fit with some of the areas that children are learning and would highlight people from a variety of different backgrounds. Now, some of these are more familiar names than others, which will be kind of exciting because for those that might not be as aware, we'll have these donor boards and you can learn about these individuals as part of that. So the folks we're going to highlight is May um, Jemison, an astronaut, Leonardo Fibonacci, a mathematician, Mary Sherman Morgan, a rocket fuel scientist, Steve Jobs, a tech entrepreneur, Patty Alexander, a microbiologist, and Albert Einstein, a physicist. So um, again, highlighting six individuals from different areas, and these were chosen to really enhance the education that children are receiving, and they will be highlighted in the different areas which correspond to the grade levels where children will be outside using these areas. So some of the themes that we could use as we promote this would be like um, Jemison helps STEM education lift off, you know, <laughs> highlighting her contribution, and um, Fibonacci, it all adds up to STEM. Um, jobs think different through STEM. So I think there are some fun things that we can do as we're encouraging people to give to this project and tie it in with these individuals. And maybe we'll educate some of us that weren't as familiar with some of these names like me. I know some of the names I went, oh, I have to look those up and learn a little bit more about them. And so our idea on how we'll recognize is that we'll have benches with three standing walls, one bench in each of the three areas. And there'll be a wall on each side. So one wall will highlight one individual, the other side another, with actual a bench there so that individuals, um, you know, the kids can sit down and, and be a part of, you know, just enjoy that. And that we will have a biography of the famous name. So we'll have some information about them on these walls. And that will help to start, um, tie instructional material into this. And that we'll have a partial list of donors on each of them. And I'll talk in just a moment a, a little more about donor recognition and how we'll do that as part of this. So some of the considerations for donor walls is we wanted it to be a permanent structure that would be finished. Um, just so when it's done, it's done, and we don't keep adding on, and, and that be it may be a little bit disruptive to the environment. Um, that they're more than simply a donor recognition mechanism, but they add value to what's going on, and they add to the educational environment. So we thought that that would be a fun way to do it. And it will really help um, children that are part of the school carry with them into adulthood that look at these individuals and what they contributed and what one person can do. And I think what you can do, I think that you know, for each, each student to come away with, look what a person can do and look what I can do as I move ahead with my learning. And that there'll be really pieces of art to a certain extent. Um, so it'll be interesting. It'll really add to the area and really be kind of fun and artistic in the spirit of the facility. So that, that's our hope for this. Now I will tell you when I show you the pictures, this is not exactly what it's going to look like, okay? Because it might not be that artistic yet. <laughs> so I just have to preface that before you look at this. So um, this is the Albert Einstein. But um, we could have, again, you see the bench. You see behind it the board, and we'd have information about him, and then have ways to, to note and to recognize the donors. And we are going to have different levels of giving. And our intent is that anyone that gives $50 or more will be recognized. And there will be different levels. So again, as, as the amount that someone gives increases, we would use just a little larger font size to recognize those individuals. Um, so for those that give $1,000 or more, they could choose the specific individual they would like their name to be displayed on. So if it was Albert Einstein and they really wanted their name displayed on that particular board, they could choose that. Uh, for the remainder that are under 1,000, we thought we'd just kind of mix it up and try to um, you know, 
know, divide the names up equally among the various boards. And I think this will be fun in many respects because people can walk around and if you know they gave less than a thousand, they can walk around and find where their name is, and that'll get them moving around the building as well and looking at the three outdoor learning environments. And we will match any amount. So if someone gives less than fifty dollars, if somebody wanted to give ten dollars to be a part of this, we appreciate and we welcome that, and we would match that amount with twenty dollars. So their ten dollar gift would become a thirty dollar gift. But just for purposes of Keeping it manageable, we're doing $50 and up, we'll get recognition, $1,000 and up, and choose specifically the individual that they would like to have their name displayed on that board. <coughs> so that's the idea on how we will do recognition as part of it. And again, we're still figuring this out, so this is a work in progress uh, as we go. And this is just a little closer up of, um, view of that board that you saw before in terms of how we'll recognize, and you can see there's some little names there. And again, I think that would be for those maybe that give at higher levels, but we do want to recognize all. And honestly, a contribution of any amount is going to help make this available. So everyone's contribution is very much appreciated and welcomed as part of that. So um, we've, we actually, we're working today, so our, there's a page now on our website. If you go to um, midlandfoundation.org and you can, click on, it'll talk about the Central Park Elementary project. You can click on that, and then there's a donations page. So we're ready to receive your donations um, of any amount for this. And, and we certainly, we're going to begin, and I know right now it's a little more of a lull in the year. I mean, July, there are a lot of folks on vacation, but we're going to ramp up as we get closer to the start of the school year to really make sure folks are aware of this. But we want to get the word out now as well. Um, and that's part of my purpose, obviously, in coming tonight to let you know. And also, if you have feedback, because we're still in the beginning stages, so if there are things that you'd like to see us tweak a little bit, um, changes you'd like to suggest, I'm certainly open to that, because we're early on in this project and raising money. Our goal is we'd love to have this all in place if we could by the end of the year. I know many people work to do charitable do donations <coughs> at the end of the year as they're thinking about you know, tax purposes and such. So that would, would be definitely our, um, our desire to help wrap this up as much as possible by the end of the year. Now we would like to see even more than 50,000 raised from the public. I mean, we'll match up to you know, that 100,000, but we would love to see that because I, I think that we're not quite sure where the full pricing is gonna come in on this. And so we'd like to, to see even more, but that is our goal, to raise at least 50,000 from the public and then we will match that with the 100,000. So, um, so that's really where we, we are with this, and I would welcome comments or feedback that you have for us as we're beginning to get this, this fundraising piece underway. And I think it is a great way for folks to contribute to it, to really feel a part of that, because there is something, I know we've all invested in various things in our community over the years, and there's something about investing in it that makes you a part of it and you're joining in to do it. And I think that's um, just very exciting for folks to be a part of that. So um, we are excited to involve people in Central Park Elementary in this way. So what questions or feedback do you have for <coughs> me on this? Did, did you say you had First, Sharon, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and you understated what the Midland Community Foundation does for this town and for our kids. Uh, a lot of our graduates receive scholarships that have been set up through the foundation you did mention, and I didn't want that to be convinced by the public. Um, I love the concept. I'd ask everybody also remember that you can make a donation in honor of somebody or in memory of somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so if someone in your family or someone important to your career, if you're a professional scientist or engineer, if someone is substantial to your career in STEM areas, maybe that's how you honor and thank them for what they did. Uh, so that helps the public to, to do that. Um, I will personally make a sizable donation. I want to see this go. It's very important to me as an engineer and scientist. I think it's very important. And I hope everybody else will join me in doing so. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for that um, point because I did forget to raise that and I appreciate you bringing it up because we, people can also make a gift in memory of someone or in honor of someone. And we're figuring out how we're going to do that because we're thinking maybe we have it in memory of and in honor of section on each of the boards mm -hmm. so folks can do that. And I also thought for um, you know Central High School grads mm -hmm. you know, or their family mm -hmm. members, this could be a really neat way to honor <coughs> or uh, memorialize someone that that was a part of their life and can it be a part of it 
new life um, through this. So thank you for bringing that point out. Just to spark more creative stuff, mm -hmm. if you ended up in science or engineering fields and you had a teacher from Midland Public Schools mm -hmm. that kindled that, what an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, also. So anyway, we, there's lots of those different ideas. Mm -hmm. um, uh, only other suggestion I would have to <coughs> think about, and I know nothing's cast in browns yet, is perhaps a chemistry person in the town of Midland might be something you want, you want to consider <laughs> on your okay. list of people. <coughs> how, how are you going to market this to get, I mean, to solicit donations? I'm assuming we'll probably have it in our weekly oh, you bet. newsletter, yeah. but I didn't know what other, what other ways <coughs> you were going to get this out in the community. Yeah, certainly, and we'll do, we'll do a press release on it, probably multiple you know, releases as we go through the process. We'll put it, it's uh, on our website already. We'll mm -hmm. do some Facebook, um, some boosted Facebook posts to help get it out. I think we'll highlight some of the different individuals and boost that and encourage donations. So we plan to use pretty much all of our, our standard ways to do that and, and work with you because I know you've got quite the distribution mm -hmm. list through the newsletter that you put out and other communications. So we want to make sure people are, are aware because I think there's going to be a lot of interest in giving mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. So we'll work closely with Mike and his team to make sure that, that parents are aware, that um, staff is aware, and they have the opportunity to contribute. Uh, um, I'm thinking uh, uh, tomorrow's <laughs> headline. I sure appreciate the partnership and all the work that you've obviously put into this with your committee and the ideas that you've come up with on giving and uh, I'm excited to give and I know that others will follow as well <coughs> and to have this kind of partnership in our community is a huge blessing so thanks for all your legwork in putting this together and uh, we'll get the word out as well. You're welcome and again thank you for the opportunity. Uh, is there any way, I know I have, I have lots of neighbors that we talked to recently, and some of them actually central, central alum from Midland High School, target those classes they graduated from, central as a high school or as it went down, maybe see what they would do as a class reunion type thing? Or I know one of our, um, there was an article not too long ago in the newspaper about a uh, central high school reunion, so I pulled it out and gave it to one of our <laughs> staff members and said, hey, can we see if we can find, so I know she was working on, is there some sort of network out there that we can hook into, again, to make it available because I want people to have the opportunity. I don't want anyone to say, well, I didn't know I could do that when we're all said and done. I want to make sure they have the opportunity to participate if they're interested. So yes, we're working on that. And if any of you have any connections to some of the central yeah. you know, high school alum groups, uh, if they have a distribution list and they'd be willing for us to provide information to them that they can distribute, we would be very happy to work with them to do so. And we've, we've toyed with, should we do a brochure or not? And we're still in a little bit the debating stages because now so much is done through you know, online electronic media we've gone, but, but we may still develop something like that because there is you know, a certain segment of the population where that is the best way to communicate mm -hmm. with them. So, so we're looking at how we might want to develop potentially some printing materials to go along with it. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. Exciting. Right. Thank you. Very Thank exciting. you. Thank you, Sharon. Exciting. Well, I'll be able to go and play. <laughs> We're open, right? Sharon and her team has been great on this. They've been really creative, and so it's really helping us come a long, long ways yeah. with it. So. Okay. It's going to be another <coughs> exciting piece of the project. All right. Moving on to 3.2, which is Mike. Yes. So, um, as we've done in the past, we have gone, I think in the past you've listed the names, but they're pretty excessive to go through all the names of the scholarships. So I'll give a brief, um, um, the amount of student scholarships that were given this year, many through the Community Foundation, and we'll have them scrolling at the end of the meeting on uh, the TV cast, and then we'll have them on our website as well, so we don't want to miss anybody. But this year there were 17 local scholarships recently announced, and our students earned approximately $16.5 million pretty impressive again what our students do and the generosity of our community and uh, other areas where our students are in scholarships and so we will have the 17 local scholarships and the recipients of those scrolling at the end of the meeting thank you thank you 
everyone in the community who contributes <coughs> to those scholarships. Yeah, I noticed all the scholarships weren't just seniors. They were, uh, there were some in the middle school grades as well. And I hadn't realized that before. You're right there. I, I do see a always see ninth grader listed there mm -hmm. as well. So it must be the criteria set there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. Are there any requests <laughs> to address the board? <laughs> I would say no. Not tonight. <laughs> All right. Moving into FFO. We didn't have an FFO <coughs> meeting this month, but I will turn it over to you, Bob. For yeah, <coughs> it is only fitting that. Uh, we have seven gifts. If you notice, they all come through the Vernary Community Foundation tonight. <laughs> uh, those seven gifts total eight thousand one hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars and fifty cents, and they run from. Uh, they're not all athletics, but quite a few are through the Community Gives, where mm -hmm. again the organization does uh, work and now matches that and gives back to the organization. And the other one is from the Mary McIntyre Memorial Athletic Fund. Uh, that one's the, the larger of the group at $2,139.50, and that's used for the uh, student aid, the, the uh, fees to pay. And they go at uh, students at Midland High, the way that was set up. Um, they're for information only, doesn't require any board action tonight. All right, thank you very much. Moving on to item six, which is human resources. Yes, um, we do have a memorial to recognize with the board staff would like to send their Sincere sympathies to the family of Mr. Richard Dick Madison, who passed away on July 7, 2016. Mr. Madison was hired in 1958 as the principal of Ashman School. He opened the two el new elementary buildings during his time at MPS, Chestnut Hill and Siebert Schools. Mr. Madison served as Chestnut Hill principal from 1963 to 1988 when he retired. He received career recognition in 1963 as a respected MPS administrator for 30 years. So it's quite the impressive mm -hmm. career. Yeah, back to his family. We also on 6.2 have uh, a couple announcements. We have Joseph Austin, the building manager, mm -hmm. and Dean, I'm going to say Dean's last name wrong, but the funder. Our electrician and trades will retire on August 31st. Item 7.0, correspondence to <coughs> and from the Board of Education. Um, 7.2 is just information requesting for FOIA. And 8 is scheduled activities. Our next meeting will be August 15, 2016, and the rest of the meeting dates are published here. And at that time, we move into item 9, which is our study discussion <coughs> session. So, Yvonne? I just hope everyone's having a nice summer, getting a nice little break and enjoying the beautiful weather we've been having. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just thought it was great to hear from Sharon tonight. It's very, really <coughs> exciting. It's been fun to watch the building go up, but uh, now to start talking about some of the, the fun details and the, the learning, that sure would have been a fun way to learn science mm -hmm. back when I was a kid. So thank you to everyone that's involved, and I look forward to the all the announcements and um, start the fundraising. Yeah. Um, I looked at the Midland Public School website last night and just was impressed with all of the opportunities we have to share what's going on with the um, videos of the building that's going on at Central Park. It's just wonderful that everyone in the community, if they want, can take a look at what's, <coughs> being, what's being done there uh, behind the fence. And it's a bird's eye view, and it's just real exciting. Um, I sure appreciate uh, Midland Area Community Foundation and what they've come out tonight and, and the partnership and the work they've put behind this whole uh, push to make that learning, outdoor learning space, something special. So uh, again, Midland uh, doesn't disappoint with the support that they've given the schools, and uh, just looking forward to um, seeing how that goes and getting on tonight and putting my donation in. Nothing to say that hasn't been said already. Thanks, Sharon, for your work and community for all their support. And good luck to all the new hires I see, lots of new teachers. This is the last dub I take it. Please. No, yeah. no, that is. Yeah. More. Yeah. The, you're getting those as they get processed fully okay. through the paperwork, okay. and so that's the start of them. So um, that's 
probably about a dozen there. So we've got a couple more lists to be able to go through. <laughs> good luck. Good luck yeah. to them. Yep. Work work them. And Mike, what, what is the total right now? That will be. Um, if we I'm knock you're going to make me say it. I'm going to say between 46 and 48. Okay. Um, and we, we are down to, um, well, we have some uh, part positions. So we probably have about three and a half total positions. Um, right, but still working hard on some special education positions is what's kind of been the hold up on it. So, um, but we have to process all those. We hire our own yeah. paperwork process, yep. bring yep. them all through, mm -hmm. you know, have them chase their documents, and so it takes a little while to get here. So, gotcha. and I too uh, repeat thank you to Sharon and the Community Foundation. It'll be great to make that happen. And just as a uh, little factoid, just in very rough numbers, and I know you can get lost in the averages. But that means our graduates of this year's senior class, even though they may not all be seniors, averaged almost twenty-two thousand dollars each on those scholarships that they received. That were the least uh, received by many public school students. And that just puts it in a different perspective when you hear it on a per student basis. It's a ginormous number. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, I too welcome <coughs> all the new teachers and um, continue to exciting for them and welcome them into the MPS family and thanks to Sharon and her group at the Community Foundation it's been a wonderful wonderful outdoor learning environment and it's fun and it's great when we can partner with the community to fill in some of the gaps um, what things that the bond will not cover so that is it turn it over to you Mike yeah and Sharon has embraced this and taken off with it. So I really, I want to make sure you understand that she's put a lot into it, her team and her uh, behind the scenes. And so um, she's worked right with our architect on some of the, the, the bench design, the idea how to recognize. And so the, the two of them have done a great job and we're heading the right direction on there as well, as you can see. A um, couple of th other things I want to run by you. So we you know, recently tested our water since that's the oh, fad yes. right now to do <laughs> and so uh, we, we're jumping on board so we better do that to make sure we at least know what we have and um, I think somewhat surprising uh, the ages from our facility came back clean we had one water fountain in the pool at Northeast and it wasn't really due to other pieces it was the water fountain itself and the chlorine in that pool area that um, hampered the equipment and so we have to change the equipment out on the water fountain so came back very good so we we um, are glad we now know and, yeah. we're, mm -hmm. and we're safe we don't have to worry about any water issues and probably some credit goes to the city of Midland as Patrick has joined them recently so yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> take the good credit yeah. so. <laughs> um, uh, Pam mentioned the drone footage of Central Park Elementary if you haven't had a chance go on our website take a look at that we'll keep trying to add updates to that as they send them to us um, if you haven't been by it in the last 10 days it, it continues to grow very quickly. Mm -hmm. They're actually putting uh, roof deck structures on, on portions of the building right now. Um, they have got the main street about 75% done. So I think we're down to the last two pods of that area. So they are moving quite quickly and you can see they're developing. So probably in August, we'll take a site visit back over there. We're gonna even try to in, um, invite some of the teachers who will be teaching there at, yeah. and try to sneak them in there as well in August mm -hmm. to get them a little bit excited about the project as well as we go. So that's very exciting. Um, we went over instructional staffing, so we had a lot to do there. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the hiring process is done for you to chase. And, um, and we will get those all to you for approval as we go forward. Very exciting to have that many new faces going forward. Um, Central Auditorium, so the mechanical electric package has been completed and we sent that out to bid. Um, still working a little bit on the interior with our user groups, what they would like. Now that we know the exact dollar amount left of the mechanical and electrical, and what can we accomplish in there? As you know, we probably can't deliver everything everyone wants, but we're, we're working on that. And so um, we hope to have that as well done in early September and out to bid as well. So the work on the auditorium will begin um, late fall, early winter as we go forward. So hit that timeline for next fall as well as we go forward. Um, the other thing I, I did want to mention is, I, you know, as we add 46 staff members and we added uh, four new administrators and all the pieces that have been going on, opening day is going to be kind of special this year, so you might want to mark that down. We're going to change our format a little bit as well because the auditorium will be closed. Mm -hmm. So we're, we, we mm -hmm. decided today we're going to move Dow High Cafeteria and uh, we are bringing a guest speaker in this year. And I'm not going
going to give you a whole lot of information about her except for to know that she was the Indiana Teacher of the Year and now National Teacher of the Year, which is quite unique. And I'm not going to tell you how unique it's ever, but it's gonna, we're going to bring her in to speak as well as we go forward. And like, I'm not going to go home and Google. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you might get a Google and find it. You try to find it. But it's part of the effect of the opening day. Is, is right. So what date is that? Um, Are you giving that up? Yeah, I should give the date. <laughs> no, Cindy, you got to Google that. Cindy will <laughs> send it. August 31. Okay. August 31, okay. So we'll start in the morning there for two hours okay. as we go forward. So that'll be an exciting day as well. And that is Excellent. all I have for you Excellent. today. All right. Does anyone else have any other comments? Thank you, everyone. It was great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, meeting adjourned, 7.35.